Hey guys, John V here from Phone Reno. Right now we're doing a video on BlackBerry 10. We're just going to talk about more about it in depth. We know that BlackBerry has been developing it for quite some time and the QNX based platform is a big departure from what they're used to with BlackBerry. So there's a lot of new things about it. Some things might be a little bit different and of course it's a new venture for BlackBerry. So we're going to find out how it works right now. So finally folks, after a long time in the making, BlackBerry 10 is officially here with the BlackBerry Z10. And quite honestly, if you're a BlackBerry user right now, um, you'll probably uh, definitely like this. You'll appreciate the stuff that BlackBerry put on this device. It's more touch friendly compared to its previous uh, you know, platforms like what we found with the original BlackBerry Storm and sequentially the torches out there, the uh, the BlackBerry Bull 9900, even the Storm 2. Uh, it's fully optimized for touch experience. And so it's great in that aspect. And on top of that, um, it is just uh, a lot more intuitive, uh, though there are some things that some power users on other platforms will miss, and on top of that, might not adhere to their needs. Visually, the BlackBerry 10 platform looks very similar to any other modern UIs out there. It's fairly simplistic, though there are some really nice, um, you know, uh, eye candy that's associated with it. For example, when you have it unlocked and you're locking it, um, you have this very neat looking transition effect like so, as if you're opening up a blind or something, which is very nice. And on top of that, it's driven by a lot of gestures, just like you saw. Uh, now the device is turned off, you can actually unlock it by just doing a swipe up from the bottom bezel. So it's no small attention detail, which is nice. But overall, though, it doesn't have the glitzy look of uh, Windows Phone or even Android to an extent. And there's very minimal please, uh, personalization with it. You could change the background wallpaper. And here in the app panel, you could rearrange the icons and whatnot. Um, you could even make folders if you'd like. Uh, that's your option. But that's pretty much the extent when it comes to personalization. Quite frankly, there is a steep learning curve trying to understand the platform when you're first using it just because it heavily relies on a lot of gestures. Very similar to what we saw with WebOS, but once it's mastered, it's pretty intuitive. So real quickly, we're going to run them down here for you. The first one here is the uh, swipe up feature from the bottom bezel. Now, at any time if you're in, a, in an application or something uh, and, you do, you, and you use the uh, swipe up to a gesture, you'll get what they call peak view. And with peak view, you get to see how many notifications that you have like so. So that's one of them. The other one is if you do a swipe up and let go, it puts whatever application you're in into a frame view. So basically it's the way, the platform's way of actually multitasking. And with specific applications, for example, uh, the AccuWeather um, application here, if you put it into frame view, um, it's gonna give you a very useful widget, but most of the other applications don't take uh, advantage of that. The other one is a swipe down down feature from the top bezel. In this case, in the home screen, you're going to get quick uh, connectivity features. But if you're in a specific application, it changes. The, uh, it gives you different options. Basically, it's the new menu button with the uh, platform. And finally, the most difficult one uh, to master is just the swipe up to the right, swipe up then right feature, which gains you access to the BlackBerry Hub. So you swipe up, you hold, and of course you get to see peak view, and to the right, um, you get to the BlackBerry Hub. And with the BlackBerry Hub, it's the centralized area where you get all your notifi notifications. When it comes to the core organizer apps with BlackBerry 10, nothing really different about them. You're pretty much typical fanfare. For example, you have a calendar app, which you'll be able to sync your Google account with. Uh, you have documents to go to create uh, Word documents, even Excel files on the go. Uh, you have a generic looking calculator application right there. You have the weather one, which we showed you already. You get the temperature, weather information, like so. And you also have the typical, um, if you've used a BlackBerry before, you'll be very familiar with the clock application. You have the alarm clock, the world clock, stopwatch timer. And the last thing here is just a, a, uh, its own uh, voice control services. Uh, not quite to the same level as Siri or Google now, but you'll be able to send text messages, emails, BlackBerry messages, even schedule appointments. But it's not as smart compared to uh, other services out there. For example, if we're going to ask it a question here. Who is Michael Jordan? So basically, it's just going to ask you if you want to search you the want web. To search the internet for who is Michael Jordan? And as you can tell, it's what pretty robotic well, with its uh, voice. Nothing really, nothing that's fancy or anything like that. 
For any of the Black Bear users out there, you'll know that Black Bears in general are known for their messaging experience and the BlackBerry Z10 with its on-screen keyboard with an all-touch screen affair. It works very well here. We, de we definitely like how RIM uh, uh, does this. So you have a nice spacious layout, very responsive too, and we definitely like the uh, gestures in play too. If you do swipe down, you get to all the different layouts, and if you do swipe up, get back to the main layout. So it's really quick in um, get getting access to a bunch of different characters. Though it would have been nice to see some you know, punctuations being integrated to the main layout itself, but oh well. But the other thing is just the way RIM handles its predictive text. It's a little bit different, but we find it, um, you know, it might not be as quick as just typing each character separately, but it's also just an alternative way. So we'll quickly demo that here for you. And there you go. That's just how you do it. And you can tell the words come up at the top. All you gotta do is just do a swipe up. So it might be fast for some people, but when if you're gonna do it the old-fashioned way, it's still pretty good. For a version 1.0 platform, we gotta admit that the nice thing about the BlackBerry Z10 is that it has a very consistent performance with pretty much all actions. So if it's basic task. For example, opening up applications um, to even more complex things like gaming, it's able to maintain its level of performance. It rarely lags, which is nice, and it's just that consistent experience that we like. It's powered by a dual-core 1.5 GHz Qualcomm S4 Plus processor with 2 GB of RAM. So it's pretty much the same chipset used by many of today's high-end devices out there. But it's not as you know uh, as as uh, appealing compared to a quad-core. But nevertheless, we definitely like the uh, performance that it exhibits. Another aspect that Black Bears are known to excel in is just the email experience. But interestingly enough, if you look at the app panel, there is an icon for actually an email. Uh, you'll actually have to get into the BlackBerry Hub to check out all your messages. So uh, when it comes to just the experience, it doesn't really differentiate itself or even enhance itself versus what we find out there um, on other on other platforms. So if you're used to the Google, the Gmail experience on Android, you might find the experience to be a little bit lacking compared to the comprehensive set of features that that platform has to offer. With BlackBerry World on BlackBerry 10, it's basically a centralized area where you to purchase content, uh, whether it be free or even something you have to pay for. Now, it, they offer a bunch of different things nowadays. You have games, applications, even music, videos, and they're all separated. So you could either search for games um, if you want. If you want apps, you could do that. They're categorized too. Uh, music, you could purchase uh, albums, even individual songs if you'd like. And of course, videos, uh, just like we see some other rival services out there, some new movies you could either purchase or rent. So you have all that options too in the BlackBerry world. Check out the handsets music player, nothing really fancy with its presentation, it just pretty much follows form to any other music player out there in the market. So you have your album cover, your on screen controls when you're playing a song. If you go back, you could actually categorize it from artists, albums, genres. You could tell pretty much uh, standard fanfare with its presentation. When it's in an active frame though, it doesn't show you any mini control functions, nor can you gain access to them, um, you know, in the uh, in the menu settings right there. But if you turn off the device, turn it on in the lock screen itself, you press the volume up, volume down buttons, you're going to gain access to a mini player, so you can still control, uh, you know, tracks with it. Of course, you could launch the camera application by clicking the icon in the home screen, but if you're in the lock screen, you have another way of gaining access to it. Just got to hold down the icon right there and quickly launch the application. Now, as far as the layout, it's pretty much uh, minimalistic, uh, very clean looking interface. You have the gallery right here to the left to preview your, your photo. On the right, an icon to change the different modes. So you have the camera, the video, and even the time shift feature. And right here at the bottom right, it's just the different uh, options, uh, the menu settings that you have now it's very slim unfortunately it's kind of it's got a little bit sad just because it doesn't quite feature the uh, shooting modes that other rival handsets offer so you could do stabilization burst mode uh, but it doesn't have things like panoramic um, you're not there, there are barely any other types of uh, you know manual settings to the extent you have different scene modes too so it's very slim pickings with its feature set uh, the one that's most noteworthy is just the time time shift feature which basically um, is best used let's say for example you're trying to shoot a photo in a crowd um, and there's people coming into the frame and whatnot or 
where someone's doing a goofy face uh, with the uh, time shift feature. It basically buffers or takes photos a little bit before you take the shot and a few after so you can actually select which best photo uh, to use and I'll actually put that into the image itself. One app worth mentioning that you'll probably be using a lot with the BlackBerry's 10 operating system is just the Maps application. Now this is just as bare bones and basic and that's pretty unfortunate just because a lot of people have heavily rely on uh, you know turn by turn directions and maps in general. You do get turn by turn directions and it's voice guided too which is great but it's missing out some of the features that we've become accustomed to seeing. For example uh, aerial view, satellite views, um, you only get a 2D uh, regular view like so. You'll get traffic, but that's pretty much it. No 3D maps, nothing like that. So it's pretty much as basic as it can get. Ultimately, BlackBerry controls its own destiny. Now, everything hinders on how quickly they can actually expedite the development of its platform. From the onset, it's visually appealing, but of course, it's lacking some of the con convenient features that we've seen with other mobile platforms. So therefore, if you're a Windows phone user, an iPhone user, and even Android user, it's going to be a val hard, valid argument to actually make the switch to BlackBerry OS X. But of course, if you're using the old BlackBerry uh, OS, uh, this should be a very good transition for you. So if you'd like to learn more about BlackBerry OS 10 guys, you can check out our website, phonerena.com. It's John V. Thanks for watching.